Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. The old saying goes, may you live in interesting times, and I don't remember context. I don't remember if that was a curse or a blessing, but we live in interesting times and we're gonna do interesting things in interesting times because that's, that's how we do these things. Today we're gonna talk about how to change your feeder from ADSB Exchange to any one of the other available network sites out there that collect this data from wonderful volunteers like ourselves here. I am not going to talk about the current situation with ADSB Exchange because I don't know enough about the situation and because it hasn't landed enough. And I would like to kind of leave it that way down in the comments. And when something does happen, there will be some news on the channel. But right now, I don't have any news to share. So we're just not going to talk about that. We are, however, going to feed a bunch of different new sites. So another one of those things about living in interesting times is I switched from Mac OS over to Windows. And I'm kind of giving Windows a try. My goal was, my, my plan was to switch over to Linux directly. But the thing showed up with Windows on it. I figured I'd play around and see if Windows has fixed itself since Windows 7 when it used to be good. So far... Not looking good, but we are on Windows and we are playing around with it and it it's interesting. So let's go get our feeder reconfigured to feed some new hungry websites with airplane information from our area, from our skies. All right, so we are on Windows at a command prompt. I'm using a program called Tabby and so far I like it. I need to be able to connect to the machine that we set up in a few prior videos on how to feed the network. So I need to go to SSH pi. Oh, this is nice. ADSB exchange dot local. Why did it do that? Okay. SSH pi at ADSB. Okay, cool. Press the right arrow key to get to the end of the memorized, memorized line. And what's my password? This is the same password that you reset using the web interface in previous videos. We are now logged in. So the first thing we need to do whenever we make any changes to anything is we need to make some backups. The file that we're working with is user local bin ADSB exchange dash feed dot sh. So that's the script that we need to edit. So CD user local bin, and there's a bunch of stuff out here. We're gonna copy CP ADSB exchange dash feed dot sh to ADSB exchange dash feed dot sh dot original because we can use long file name so why not make it as long as needed and i don't have permission to do that so how do you fix that you escalate privileges sudo spell it right sudo so super user do bang bang which means do the last thing that i typed in without sudo as sudo and now we have it and you can see the ADSB exchange feed.sh and the ADSB exchange feed.original. So now fire up your favorite editor. Mine is Joe, ADSB exchange feed.sh. And in here is a whole bunch of information on what we want to feed. If you do not want to feed ADSB exchange, you can remove that. Oh, it's read only. So now we got to do that pseudo bang bang trick again. If you do not want to feed ADSB exchange, you can remove that. And here's a, a graphic showing that I am currently feeding ADSB Exchange and it's all happy. And then it will disappear afterwards and it won't be happy anymore. And then we need to add in a couple more feeders. There are a lot of feeders out there. These are just the ones that I have chosen from a list for no particular reason whatsoever. And we need to put those in place of where we removed the ADSB Exchange version. So let's see. Yes, I want the lines. And then I need to clean up from my my notepad and make everything look pretty. Now we are feeding ADSB.fi. We're feeding ADSB.lol on port 1337. That's funny. We're feeding ADSB.1. We're feeding the airtraffic.com. And these are all the correct port numbers and everything. The very most important thing to do with this is to make sure you have this backslash at the end of your line. What that tells Bash, the program that's going to run this script, well, SH. The program that's going to run this script is there's more to come after this line. If I don't put this here, it will execute the line up to this point and then stop and then it will complain about everything else. So we don't want to do that. You need to make sure you have those backslashes at the end of the line, which says continue reading the next line down, which is also why we have this thing all neatly indented and everything to make it look pretty because it tells us programmers from a visual perspective that this is part of the thing above it. And then we need to save this file and reboot. You can do a whole bunch of other things besides reboot, but reboot's easy enough. So we're gonna reboot sudo 
I keep spelling sudo wrong. Reboot. At least I typed sudo this time, right? And now it is closed down and rebooting. All right, so we have gotten the machine completely rebooted. I logged back in and I wanted to take a look to make sure that it was working. How do you know this thing is working? This is kind of crazy. So the first thing I wanted to do was ping the first one in the list, which is feed.adsb.fi. And that gives me its IP address when I ping it. So ping ADS, ping feed.adsb.fi gives me 103.196.37.90. And then I do a netstat command, which says, show me everything that I am currently connected to. And then I pipe it out to grep so I get just the line that I'm interested in. And this is the IP address for the feed.adsb.fi machine. And you can see I have a connection established. So that's an established connection, but I want more than that. I, I need to have more. So let's see, what else do we have? Super important is that we are not feeding the ADSB exchange server anymore because we took it out and I wanted to show that it actually did disconnect. So take a look at this screenshot here. You'll see that it's it's got a frowny face. It's not happy because we're not feeding it anymore. Next up, I wanna make sure that I am actually feeding the ADSB FI globe map. So I wanna take a look at that website. Now on the bottom left-hand corner of the ADSB.fi site, you can see that you are feeding data Data, and it now has a green light next to it. Before it had a red light said you are not feeding data. So I am going, well, so I'm going to click on that. That's going to give me some information. I am sending 2.842 messages per second and I'm sending positions and I've sent 812 total positions and I'm using up hardly any bandwidth and there's not any latency to, to speak of. Fantastic. We are showing that we are sending data to adsb.fi. So there is two pieces of evidence that this is working and as planned. And then here is a picture of what the ADSB, uh, the globe.adsb.fi website looked like before I started feeding it. I am in this Luck, Wisconsin area right here in the center and there are no planes in my area. And then in a short amount of time, I have fed a couple of planes. This one right here is a little Cessna, uh, November 224.73. Let's go take a look at the other website and see if that worked. Okay, so this is on the globe.adsb.fi website, and you can see that same Cessna in that same general area. And down here, you can see receivers equals two. One of those is me, and this is the plane, November 22473. Aces, we're making it happen. Friends, that is a quick way to feed other networks besides just the ADSB exchange. You can leave ADSB exchange in if you want. You can take it out if you want. I just wanted to show that it did the thing, and... It does, and we're pretty happy with it. Don't worry about going back and figuring out what all of the commands were to get this thing reconfigured. I put the commands and the text down in the description down below. There are plenty of videos in this series. I think we're up to four or five at this point. We're having a lot of fun working on this machine, and that's what this is all about, is fun. If you know of any other sites that we can feed with our data, drop a comment down below and let me know what those addresses are. Hopefully, YouTube won't filter them out for us and we can add them later on in the script. I'll just put them back in the description here as we get more coming in because there are lots of places to feed. It's a, it's an interesting time to be alive. There is a video right over here I think you will enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.